Hey there. In this short lecture, we're going to be talking about the future value of an annuity. Uh, now, you're probably familiar with the concept of future value. Um, so the basic idea is that we're taking a sum of money and we're determining what its value would be at a future point in time. Uh, what we're adding here is this concept of an annuity, which represents what we call a stream of payments. Um, so think about, an, when you think about an annuity, think about uh, or an investment account of some kind like a 401k or an IRA, where you're not only maybe going to contribute a lump sum, but you're probably going to make payments over a period of time, maybe on a monthly basis or at an annual basis. And so by using the future value of an annuity calculations, you could, in essence, determine if you were to invest a certain amount of money over a period of time uh, at a certain interest rate or expected rate of return, how much money would you have after that period of time? And so this is a great equation to use in personal finance to project out potentially retirement savings and other things like that, uh, especially if you're saving over a long period of time. So let's start out by just kind of going over the calculation. Now, one thing I want to mention is there are uh, probably four different ways of calculating the future value of an annuity, um, the easiest of which is probably using a financial calculator, which we're not going to cover in this video. Um, you can use Excel, of course. They have formulas in there to calculate it. Uh, and then you can use uh, a table, um, which I'll go over in a subsequent video. But in this video, we're going to focus on using the future value of an annuity equation, which is shown right here uh, towards the top middle end of your screen. Um, so let's kind of go through the different components to this equation. It's really important that you understand what each of the variables represent. Uh, and then we'll kind of walk through a calculation on our own just to get you uh, a little bit of experience on, on how to use it uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, fortunately, it's not very complicated. If you understand kind of the basic laws of order of operation, uh, you can get this pretty simply. Um, so the first component is FVA, which is what we're trying to solve for. So this here represents the future value of an annuity. Um, so I abbreviate that, abbreviate that as the acronym FVA. Uh, the next component is PMT, which represents payment. Uh, this is the money that we're going to be contributing on an ongoing basis. Um, so this could be in months, in years, in quarters, or whatever denomination you would want. We're going to use years because it's a little bit easier on the calculation side. Uh, the next component here, we have, this is once, so this is numerical number one, and then I, this I represents our interest rate or expected rate of return. Uh, N represents the number of periods. Um, so if we're using annual payments, our number of periods will be expressed in years. If you're making an, uh, monthly contributions, uh, this would be expressed in the number of months, so on and so forth. And then, of course, we've got another one over here. And then lastly, we're going to divide by the interest rate. So we need some pieces of information here. So for now that you understand the variables, uh, let's walk through uh, a question. And so let's say that we want to invest $2,000 a year, uh, and we expect to get a rate of return of 8%, um, and then we expect to invest over a 25-year period of time. So those are our variables. Now we want to figure out after the 25 years, of course, how much money are we going to have? So what I like to do to start these questions, just because it's really easy to get numbers mixed up and, and half the problems that I see uh, with these types of questions coming up incorrect is little to do with the person's ability and, and knowledge of the concept and more of their ability to be organized and they mix up numbers. Um, so what I like to do is I like to show everything over here on the left-hand side. And so we're going to first show our payment. Our payment, of course, is going to be the $2,000 per year. Our interest rate is going to be 8%. Now, for the purpose of calculations, we convert this to a decimal. So this 8% is going to become 0 0.08. And then lastly, we have the N, which represents the number of periods. Because we are calculating how much we're investing on an annual basis, this affects our number of periods. So you want to make sure these are consistent. If you use month annual contributions and you calculate periods based upon months, you're going to be getting a very, very optimistic and unrealistic uh, depiction of what your retirement savings will be. So make sure that if you're making contributions in monthly, your periods are in months. If you're making contributions in a yearly basis, your periods are in years. Um, so we're doing this over 25 year period. And we're of course solving for the future value of the annuity. Now the next component is of course to go ahead and to start filling in 
all of these different variables. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start doing so uh, over here. So we're going to start with payment. And so that's going to be our $2,000. And then we're going to put our bracket here. And we're going to put 1 plus our interest rate converted to a decimal is 0 0.08 to the nth power, which is 25 minus 1. We'll put our other bracket here. And we're going to divide by 0 0.08. Um, so to this point, that's really how your calculations should look if you filled in all of the known variables with future value of annuity representing the unknown variable. So if you were to go through this kind of step by step, uh, which is what I'm going to show you, um, you would then perform a basic calculation. So just a quick thing on order of operations for those of you that are really unfamiliar with that uh, is everything in parentheses is done first. So we got to do this first here. Uh, and then obviously we're going to do the subtraction piece uh, and then the division piece here. So this is going to be uh, step one, right? Adding one plus 0 0.08 and then working outside the parentheses so the 25th power. Um, you can use a calculator for this, which is a lot easier. Uh, or you can multiply 1.08 uh, by itself 25 times, which as you can understand can be kind of tedious. Uh, but if you have a calculator that typically has uh, the button that looks like, uh, let me change colors here, that looks like Y with an X over it, um, that's usually to the power. And so if you hit that button and then enter 25, uh, you can typically get to the response that you need to. Uh, and then we're going to subtract one, then we do the division, and then the subtraction or the multiplication here. So let's fill out like step two. So if this was the first step, step two, we're going to have 2,000. We're still going to have our bracket. And here, we're going to have 6.8485 less 1 and still divided by our 0 0.08. So let me catch you up on what we did. Um, so the only thing that we did thus far is we took 1 plus 0 0.08. Okay, so we have 1.08. And then we took that number. And then we got the result of the 25th power of that number. Those two transactions will get us 6.8485. Okay, so if you're following along, that's exactly what we did. That's the only thing that we've done so far. So the next step, obviously, is we have to subtract 1. And so that's a pretty simple process, right? So instead of 6.8485, we're going to go ahead and get 5. 0.8485 and we eliminate that step there. Uh, now in terms of your calculations uh, you can certainly write out the entire thing again uh, and so kind of step by step I'm just doing this simply for space uh, and so the last thing that we do at least in the brackets is we're going to divide 5.8485 by 0 0.08 and so in step 3 we should have still our 2000 and then in the brackets, we're going to have 73.1059. Now, the last step to this process is pretty simple. And we're simply going to take 2,000 and we're going to multiply that by the 73.1059. Now, when you complete that portion of the calculation, you're going to get end up with 100 and forty-six thousand two hundred and eleven dollars and eighty cents and so this would be your end result after that calculation and so what uh, this essentially tells us is if we go ahead and take two thousand dollars and we invest that every year and we get a rate of return of eight percent which is certainly not a guarantee but over a long period of time the s p 500 typically earns about eight percent uh, I know this past year, 2018, certainly was not the case, um, but over a long period of time, that's typically holds true. Remember, when we invest for retirement, we're investing over a long period of time, so we're not necessarily overly concerned with any one year. We're more concerned over the long haul, uh, and we're going to put that money away and keep investing for 25 years. We're going to end up with $146,211.80. So I hope that helps you understand how to calculate the future value of an annuity. Thanks for watching this video.